I've got like, a few times I've done these live streams and there's been a problem with my talking voice. So this time I've got a, a microphone attached there. So hopefully you can hear me. So it should work. So let me know. Yeah, please uh, leave comments and stuff so I know you're there. And this time I've got a screen here as well so I can see you all commenting. So hello everyone. Hello Sarah. Hello everyone there. Um, yeah, thanks for signing in. Uh, that was just me kind of improvising or following a few chords and just seeing what happens, which is kind of what I do mostly when I'm playing by myself, it's just kind of playing around and exploring uh, with this instrument. So, so uh, yeah, this evening we're in the Forge, Bristol, uh, which is a beautiful location. You can't see the whole thing, so there's much more to it than just this. And the, out this window here we have Bristol, which is... Uh, always making a lot of noise, so you might be able to hear some of that. But uh, yeah, enjoy. Thanks for tuning in. So this uh, next piece is a piece that I composed myself many years ago now. Um, and I named it after my grandmother, Nine. Thank you. 
Chilled. It's always uh, after setting up all of the equipment for this, it's a transition of energy and feeling from reasonably stressful experience of setting up all this equipment and making sure it works to, to chill out playing the core. It's quite a jarring process at first, but once I get into it, it's great. Um, yeah, hello everyone. I miss you too, Jessica. And uh, my auntie there, Bridge, is signed in as well. Thank you. And uh, yeah. Everyone's commenting, that's great. Let us know uh, where, you're, where you're coming from. It's always nice to see what part of the world people are signing in from. And uh, yeah, for those of you who don't know what the Cora is, which I think there is sometimes some of you, <laughs> most of you already know, but this is a 21 stringed uh, West African harp. Um, comes from the Jalia tradition. And uh, yeah, a beautiful, beautiful tr tradition from West Africa. Um, this is an amazing instrument that's part of the whole thing. They play many other instruments as well. I'm actually kind of reading much more about the history at the moment because although I've played this instrument my entire life and I know the basics, um, I, I'm just starting to actually really go into it. It's, it's really amazing, really beautiful and um, powerful. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to play a more traditional piece now is called uh, Tubara. So this is one that I learned a long time ago and uh, I'm kind of revisiting. I'm revisiting some of the older stuff. So uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs>
there's loads more to that piece and there's all the runs and the and the breaks and the melodies and stuff but I'm still as I say kind of going back over it um, uh, thanks everyone for commenting uh, hi Simon how's it going but yeah hopefully we can so lots of my family are watching uh, which is great and uh, hopefully we get to hang out at some point this summer and uh, to everyone else hopefully I can get to see you in person do a live gig you know it's uh, great yeah we can see we will see sorry and uh, so I'm actually going to play I'm going to play I'm gonna play a piece a traditional piece again but I'm going to play it in a kind of different way and uh, those who know the choral will know this one straight away <laughs>
Yes, Jess. Uh, yes, yeah, so my sister is watching Jessica, who uh, used to, well, still does occasionally, but sing with me. There's, a, there's actually a really old video on YouTube of us singing, me and Ember together. Well, I'm not singing, I'm playing, she's singing. Uh, yeah, she can check it out. It's funny. It's, I mean, it's good, but it's also really old. <laughs> you, know, you know what it's like. Uh, and uh, hello to Aisha and Sarah and, and my mum, no? Uh, thanks for tuning in. So I've also got here today my uh, so I've re recently been having a lot of fun with this. If you just play some reverb, and if you turn the reverb up, it's like this. You can go on, 
I'll, I'll do maybe one more bit like that at the end. It's really fun. But I will uh, play some more tame chord music. <laughs> it's, great way, it's a great way to meditate. I just sit and play over two chords for like a few hours. It's great. So, um, yeah, yesterday I was playing with uh, a kit drum player and uh, Tim Short, who I play with sometimes, playing congas and bass sometimes, and also balafon. Um, we were having a jam session, it was, really, it was really great, but my fingers, I was playing so loudly trying to compete with those guys that uh, my fingers were hurting today. <laughs> it feels good, so I'm like super warmed up, so it's nice. Okay, so... I'm going to play this other piece now. Uh, it's mine, I suppose. It's called Katref. Katref. It's she Welsh for her home. Um, but being the terrible Welsh person that I am, I'm going to say that word properly. <laughs> so.
tuning now. So, uh, Bristol is being reasonably quiet tonight. And, uh, usually get political in this show, but uh, <laughs> uh, whatever you hear in the newspapers or what's going on, it's not true. Don't trust it. So traditionally the, the reason why you do the kind of bit at the beginning is just so you get yourself into the right key and the feeling of the right key and kind of basing yourself around the, the tonic note of the piece. Um, so it has an importance, you're not just kind of like going around. So because I've changed the tunings there uh, to two different notes, from the B to uh, the B flat to the B, it's uh, you have to get yourself into that kind of feeling of the different key. Otherwise you can surprise yourself and you're not expecting that note to be there. You off. So, uh, thanks everyone for signing in. I'm seeing all your lovely comments, it's great, it's really cool. Loving it. Hello, everybody.
So uh, uh, that one is a very traditional, well, it's not a very traditional piece, actually. It's more of a modern piece, but it's very well known in the modern choral world, I would say. Um, it was actually the piece that kind of really inspired me to start playing more uh, from the heart, you know. And funny enough, uh, Jeroby actually means like passion or love. Um, so I, I think traditionally it's meant to be for another human, but for me it was for the, for the choral music and its culture. Um, I think uh, there's a really interesting question there. Uh, there's a question there, but it's really slightly too far away for me to read all the text of that question, but I, I will answer after because it looks interesting. So um, there should be a few people from my Patreon uh, here. I want to say hello to you guys, especially. Thank you so much for sticking with me. And it's been a learning curve doing these tutorial videos. And it's been great to be able to share uh, some of my knowledge and kind of start people's journey onto this, into playing the Koro and, and into the world of Koro. And for some people, it was their beginning. Uh, and I really hope it can, continues on to going and you know spending time there and and all that uh, for some people it's kind of further on in their playing so then i kind of see it as a, as a gateway into into kind of this beautiful world of beautiful music from a, from a beautiful place so thank you for sticking with me because it's been uh, challenging well it's not been challenging actually it's been great but it's just obviously it's not always been smooth trying to make all these videos and stuff tutorials but it's been real fun See someone mentions playing. Is it Lampedusa? I can see. I could play Lampedusa. Lampedusa. Yeah, I'm in the right tune. So Lampedusa is a piece composed by my teacher, uh, Timoni Gibati. Um and uh, it was kind of dedicated to, to the African migrants who were um, uh, drowning in the in their journey to reach to Europe. So again, this is like a slightly different version than the original. This is kind of how it works on the chorus.
time is flying by. <laughs> Basically, only got 10 minutes left. So, in that case, I'm going to change tuning again. Uh, I mean, I go a tiny bit over. So, I might be mistaken, but I think the question that was there earlier was something about does the playing the music uh, make you feel like I have a connection to some of the traditions that um, it comes from. Um, it's not clear really, but I remember when I was a teenager and I first went to West Africa, and I'd, um, I'd only left the UK once before in my life, and I went straight to Bamako. Um, and yeah, it was it kind of quite a culture shock, I guess you could say, for a 17-year-old kid. Um, but I remember, yeah, feeling I didn't speak the language and whatever, um, so I felt quite disconnected. But as soon as I obviously picked up a Cora, um, it was just like, you know, straight in. I could, and I spent a month there, I think, uh, that time, uh, or nearly. Um, and pretty much most of my interactions and communications with everyone around me and, and, and bonding with people was through playing music, because that was the only way that we had of communicating. So um, if in that way, it was, yeah, it was a real connection. And I think uh, there is a, yeah, there's definitely a kind of a, an understanding that you get when learning uh, music from another culture. I think it's, uh, it's a really deep, uh, nuanced understanding that's hard to gain other ways. Last, this first one is a more traditional one called uh, Jura Chakere. Uh, Chakere, let's get that wrong. Um, and it's in a different tuning, and then I'm going to go to my last piece in a, in a different tuning again. Um, okay.
I say. Quite uh, fast. <laughs> so um, as long as learning uh, more kind of history about you know uh, Jalia and the Mandang people and the Malian Empire and all that, I've also been learning a little bit Western music theory. Really interesting, actually. I've learned a lot, uh, and that's really useful to have another perspective on music. Tune the wrong one. So uh, this one is for Patty. She, whenever I, we do live stream, she's always asking me to do one. In this. Different tuning. So here it is. And uh, yeah, so this is the last one. So I have to go back to my uh, new house with my new housemates who are cooking uh, dinner, which is great. They're amazing. I'm super happy about that. I don't know if they're watching, but if they are, hello. And uh, so yeah, really looking forward to that. And a big thank you to Nick Kay, my wonderful girlfriend, who's doing the camera stuff, flicking all the switches, making me look great. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and thank you all you guys for tuning in, and I can't wait to do a live performance. So as I said in my post, I think this might be the last one I do for a while, just because I think life's going to start getting a little busy again, you know? So, but it doesn't mean forever, I mean, definitely will do more. I enjoy them a lot.
and uh, see you next time and uh, yeah and I love you to all my family and the rest of you of course you're all great and uh, yeah see you soon thank you <laughs>